Hello and welcome to Nepal Traveler. Once again, we are back with our Nepal Travel Trade Talk, and we are at the A Loft in Kathmandu. We are here with our very special guest, Mr. Vikram Singh, who is the general manager of this property, and we're going to talk about tourism. He has been associated with Nepal's tourism in the hospitality industry for a couple of years, almost a decade. So, welcome to our show, Vikram. Thank you, Vari. It's always a pleasure to interact with you and Nepal Traveler. So, thank you for giving me this opportunity to give a few words on our industry. And thank you for having us here. Maybe to start with, can we share with our audience your journey in tourism and especially with Nepal? Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> it's 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 been an amazing ride as I look back into it. Uh, Twenty five odd years in this industry. I, I suppose the DNA of it is that I come from a defense background in the sense that my father, hmm. grandfather were all in the Indian Army. So, you know, hospitality in a certain sense was part of the DNA growing up where a lot of people were being entertained and, you know, so you understood that uh, way of life. So that is what piqued my, my interest. And uh, then, uh, you know, I ha was lucky enough and fortunate enough that I had a lot of mentors along this journey, which was very, very important because, you know, you, you, you always tend to think after a certain while that you know a lot, but with mentors, they keep on guiding you in their own way. And again, I've been very blessed that uh, I worked in almost all the continents in some shape or form, whether it's been consultancy or work. So it's been an amazing ride across different cultures and people. So, you know, and every day you discover something new. So that's the beauty of this this journey so far and, and I hope it keeps on evolving. Regards Nepal, I think Nepal has been very kind to me and my family. Uh, so spent almost a decade in Nepal, nine years almost uh, right now. So so it's been it's been fascinating. Nepal always every day I discover something new as well. And you've been in the forefront of the hospitality industry. You've been a GM for some time. What are some of the challenges for a GM for a branded property like Eloft in Nepal? I think in hospitality, it's not straight line maths as they say, because you see every customer is different to each other. So somebody may say that this is the best uh, beverage, for example, I've had, and somebody will say this is the worst I've had. <laughs> so, you know, there is, uh, the consistencies are very, uh, very less in that regard. So it's a very dynamic, evolving industry. So. But the greatest uh, challenges which seem to come in are for that it's a people's industry. So whether it is your internal associates or whether it is the guests, you know, each is very different from the other. And then you have to make sure that you are catering to everybody in their own way and coming out tops. You just returned from the ITB. Uh, Nepal was there to promote as a destination. How was that experience and how is that helping the destination? So ITV, uh, I've been going for almost the last two decades uh, for representing one company or the other. Uh, and uh, this time, I think it had a very large participation in terms of uh, uh, the countries which came in. I mean, for example, there was Israel and Palestine and Ukraine over there, which are at war right now. So, so imagine the kind of uh, you know participation which was there, I think, Nepal. We had almost close to 40 companies uh, representing Nepal. So that was a very strong um, uh, demand for uh, this thing. The format also had changed this year in the sense that it was a three day B2B format. They did not allow public as they generally do in the last two last days. Year. So that was business, pure business. And, and I think it was really great. And Nepal was pushed by all the people who came in. I think Pata takes credit for that because this is, they had, the, they were the ones who had the... So at the ITB, I mean, and this year there was Pata taking the lead and not NTB. What kind of a difference was there and... Uh... I think uh, whether it's been Pata uh, for ITB, whether it's been Skoll for, uh, uh, for India, for one of the travel trade fairs, uh, Sate. Sate uh, yes. And TAN, which had done another uh, In show. India. I think the private sector one has been taking a lot of initiative and trying to fill up the gaps where uh, possible. But I think uh, the gap is very big with the country's premier institution in Nepal tourism board 
for the last one year, uh, not for whatever reason, it. not been able to really push through the international objective. And as you are aware that people are not going to come for one facet of Nepal to Nepal, whether exactly. that is a hotel, whether that is a, a they're going to come for the country and some experience therein. So, you know, that has been one of the biggest gaps that has been coming now. And uh, what I feel is that with countries close to us, especially India, which is now booming, uh, you know, we need to get the word across. Otherwise, uh, uh, it's going to get difficult uh, to balance the demand and supply curve uh, with the number of tourists coming in. Uh, it's just not enough uh, to sustain all the all the supply right now in the country. So, yeah. But I would say kudos to the private sector where people like uh, Pata, Skoll, uh, Tan and all these other uh, companies are coming together and making sure that at least some, some gap can be filled up and you know, we're not uh, left alone in that sense of things. And also as a hotelier, as a general manager, perhaps one of the biggest uh, challenges facing our industry today is so many new hotels have come in, so many more rooms have been added to the inventory. Yeah. How is that working out? I mean, is that going to lead to a price war or is it really going to fill up the rooms? Uh, what's your take on that? Competition is competition. So, uh, you know, competition does have its good and bad in, in, in all senses. But uh, yeah, if somebody is investing, however, in, in a big asset like a uh, hotel, for example, there is a thought behind it. It's just not that I wake up and I build a hotel. So there's a lot of data behind it, a lot of research, research behind it, and a lot of ROI calculations around it, and a lot of advice by the brands also. So so there is a bit of a thought behind uh, the uh, you know the the number of hotels as they are growing. But uh, I do believe in this thing that right now, while the demand and supply curve is a little off balance. Uh, as soon as we hit this uh, 15 lakhs to about 18 lakhs uh, in the, this year or next year of tourists coming in into the company, that gap is going to stabilize itself. Though it may be a little mm -hmm. off balance, but coming back to a lot, I think we've been very blessed that we've closed more than 75% occupancy last year and we hope to repeat, uh, if this not more, uh, you know, increase in that in this year with a steady growth over our ADRs and our uh, total revenues. So, so that's, that's, that's my take on it. So to increase to about 15 lakhs or 1.5 million tourists, do you feel that Nepal as a whole, all, all our sectors, all our industries are working properly in terms of marketing, in terms of promotion, in terms of putting the destination out there, especially in India. India is one of the biggest markets. So, so like I said in my previous uh, answer that I think when it comes to the private sector, they have done more than what they can has been required. Uh, but uh, the bigger weakness has been with the country or the Nepal Tourism Board not pushing enough over the last year, the gap will get widened. So a market uh, in India case in point that especially Delhi, NCR, uh, one, the hotels are becoming very expensive. expensive. Mm -hmm. So what is your solution is a country like Nepal bank next door with the ease of uh, entering the country like for Indians we have passport and voter ID which can get them into the country via the airports. Exactly. So, but I think most e Indians know the stereotypical Nepal, they do not understand the depth of what Nepal has to offer. So I think uh, we need much more initiatives from the government side of things to kind of send this message across that Nepal is ready for so many tourists and across different bandwidths and genres. I, I think they will all come, uh, just a matter of promoting it the right way. With the growth in the number of five-star branded international chain properties, we would need to look at an increase in the number of luxury or little high-end tourists. I mean, what do you think Nepal should be doing to target these? Again, I think uh, luxury clientels uh, or clientele they are they have they are popular hotels in Nepal which have been serving uh, so far luxury tourists uh, and doing a great job and they are a lot of new properties like Kavya for example uh, in Nagar Court which is there uh, and then Shintamani has also come in in Mustang so we are seeing a lot of these luxury properties come in but I think uh, again the thing is that 
yeah, while that is an important facet of uh, the luxury experience, but the word needs to get out there that uh, these properties are available and Nepal has that bandwidth of luxury experiences in different areas in Nepal. But this has to be an exercise of communication to those elite clientele. I know the Nepali travel agents have been doing it. I know the properties themselves are trying their best to get the message across. But it has to come in from a country perspective, not at a local uh, perspective. Also to, to get in, let's say, 1.5 million tourists, do you think we have the adequate infrastructure, the airports, the roads? I mean, the road right now from Pokhara to Kathmandu will take you seven hours. I, I think, <laughs> yes, you've hit the nail on the head in that question. But Pokhara, uh, if I can start with, uh, because of last year's uh, incident on the flights, I think most Indian customers or tourists or agents that we talk to uh, would not like to take the air route. So we have to first tell them that, look, one on incident is a matter of it's very bad, but it's it's within the acceptable frequency of what happens and it's not like everything is bad. So people always are from India when we talk to them, they're like, no, we want to go by road. So therein comes the point that, you know, the, the road, road is time. still some time away from being made. So hopefully the government now uh, will uh, speed the act up and hopefully in the next, hopefully few months or a year, we can at least hopefully see that coming through. Uh, airport has improved. I think we can almost see some changes happening to the Tribhuvan International Airport. So that is, that is really nice. Some of the other airports, I do think, that it is for the powers to be to kind of course correct and then we can have, I suppose, uh, people flights. coming in from China, from India and all the other countries. So, But but building the airport has been a good uh, thing. So coming back to Aloft, there's been a very challenging time during the COVID, you were in operation. I mean, what do you see as things that you need to be doing to stay ahead of the competition to make Aloft a happening place? So yeah, with Aloft, I think uh, we've been very fortunate that uh, we've had a, a, a brand which is always evolving. It's the world's largest hospitality chain. So there's always things which are evolving from the brand perspective. Um, we also have an amazing uh, board of directors led by our chairman, Mr. Prithvi Bhadur Pandey, which understands the need of evolving. So uh, case in point in Aloft, between what we started off in 2019 to where we are in 2024, there's a lot of new things which have been added year on year, uh, like a new gymnasium, which is state of the art, uh, a, a spa, uh, some rooms which have been added as a different category, a banqueting facility. So there's always that constant uh, innovation as per the guest expectations. And, you keep and we keep try our, trying our best that we are always near about what the guest wants in terms of our value for money or our property perspective. So whether it is a people, whether it is a product, whether it is a process. So I think as long as you can keep evolving in your own way, uh, that keeps you uh, relevant. The trick, I suppose, is only to be relevant, not irrelevant. So, yeah. Any future plans with Aloft? I mean, what else could be coming up that will uh, cater to the audience, even perhaps more the domestic audience, the, the walk-in? So uh, where we are sitting, <laughs> the Nilgiri, Above it all, experience is going to start very soon. So that is something, it's going to be a very curated bar lounge with all about conversation and drinks. So that that is something new. Other than that, like I told you, we, this year we started the club lounge, the okay. new spa, the new gym, uh, urban rooms, etc. cetera. So, so that's also uh, already started. So I think uh, with our clients, uh, domestic or otherwise, uh, you would always see us evolving uh, in some shape or form and you can always look at something you know as we like to say a loft is different by design so we are happy to to keep on evolving in that perspective as a final word for this interview what would you like to see happening more among the the top hotels the branded hotels um, i think uh, all of us should always be on our a game because each of us has that great responsibility of making sure that the person who comes to you, the guest who comes to you is going back with great memories and they will always say Nepal, they will never say a particular hotel. So 
for us all of us lies the great responsibility of representing nepal in the hospitality or tourism sector and all of us i know all the other gms are making a lot of effort to make sure that we are evolving and staying on top of our game to ensure that they go back with great memories of nepal and always say that whatever international standard we expected in uh, in any part of the globe is available in nepal so that's what we strive for and and i know all of us are doing our best to make sure we are there thank you so much vikram for having us thank you so much thank you